This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. And one of the reasons why I say Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, and especially the reason why I've been saying it for the last 12 years or so, the strongest gym in the West. I'm Mark Bell from Super Training Gym, strongest gym in the West. This is Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. 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 The strongest gym in the West is because on the East Coast, there's the strongest gym in the world and probably strongest gym uh, that there may ever be. And that's West Side Barbell. And what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is a movie called West Side vs. the World, it's a documentary. For now, you can get it on iTunes and there's some other places you can get it as well. Hopefully soon enough, it'll be available on Netflix and hopefully everybody can see it. If you like lifting of any kind, you're gonna love this movie, so I, I highly recommend it. I think that you should go see it. It gives you a lot of insight into powerlifting, and it gives you a lot of insight into Louis Simmons, and it gives you a lot of insight into West Side Barbell. I trained at West Side Barbell. I trained with Louis Simmons, and I learned a lot from him. Louis Simmons was an awesome mentor to me, and actually still to this day is in a lot of ways, even though we don't have a lot of communication. Dave Tate is also somebody I learned a lot from. He owns EliteFTS.com and he was training at Westside while I was there as well. While the movie was awesome, and I'm really appreciative that the film was even made, I know how hard that can really be, but I think it missed a couple of points and I think one of the biggest points I think it missed is that Louis does mention in the movie, he says once you're Westside, you're always Westside. But I think there's very few people that walk through those doors and continue to go to that gym that understand that Louis Simmons is not just a savage and a beast inside the gym, he also is outside the gym. He's extremely successful with his business. He has invented the reverse hyper. He's a, he has countless inventions and probably uh, over 10 United States patents. Louis Simmons is a genius on a kind of different level than, than most would even uh, understand. But what I think a lot of the men and women that have gone through there I don't think a lot of them have gotten the message that while you're trying to build towards the strength and while you're trying to build towards these other things uh, in the gym, you should be building towards these other things outside the gym as well in your day-to-day -day life. And that's had a huge impact on me. And when I think about some of the other lifters that have come out of there, that have gone on to be successful, that have gone on to be entrepreneurs, that have gone on to be successful, in other areas of their life other than just lifting, I start to think of like Matt Wenning, I start to think of Dave Tate, I start to think of Jim Wendler who wrote 531. I start to think of all these different people that he's, uh, he's impacted. And then it really branches out from there. And I don't think they really discussed a lot of that. I don't know if I mentioned Matt Wenning. Matt Wenning is now creating his own, his own products. He has uh, bench presses and the belt squat. And he's got all these different pieces that he's making. And a lot of that is a huge influence of Louis Simmons. So at one point in my life, I was actually working for Louis Simmons. Uh, I was a uh, powerlifting coach uh, that taught powerlifting to CrossFitters at uh, CrossFit uh, certification seminars. And I did so with Jesse Burdick. Well, Louis is not easy to work for because he's a hard ass and I got fired. <laughs> That's right, I got fired. The people's coach got fired. Um, but part of the reason why I got fired was because I wasn't delivering the message that Louis really wanted. As I was going to these seminars, I started to recognize that some of the information I was giving these CrossFitters wasn't vibing with them. And so I had to figure out a way to get the message across in a little bit more entertaining way. And I had to leave out some of the stuff that Louis liked to talk about. Louis likes to talk about force velocity curves and uh, forces, uh, you know, mass times acceleration and all these different things. And uh, so I kind of left some of those things out of there because I thought they were too technical. And he called me up one day and he said, you're no longer needed, Smelly, you're out. <laughs> you're off the team. And that was really upsetting to me and that was actually really hard, but it was a good lesson to me that, you know, something I've always known about myself is I don't really work well uh, in that position working for somebody else. Uh, it's best if I am uh, working, I guess, maybe mainly for myself and not for somebody else. The other thing that Louis did that uh, really, really uh, pissed me off and cut me deep 
was while I was training there, you know, he'd always talk about the record board. And he said, Smelly, you'll never be on this record board. Well, Louie is a mastermind of understanding how people tick, and that is shown in the movie. They do show that quite a bit in the movie. He'll say one thing to one person, but he'll say something totally opposite to another because he understands your psyche. And I was pissed off at him for years for saying that because I'm like, I can be like some of these other guys. I just don't choose to be as big and fat as some of these guys, but if I want to, I can do it. So when I left West Side, which I left there under very good terms, I just uh, moved and had a lifestyle change because uh, my wife and I had our first son, Jake, and we moved uh, to set back to, to California. And while I was here in California, what was driving me and what I was going towards, here I thought, you know, I'm going to be the strongest power lift that I can be. And uh, I had a hit list and I had everybody that I knew was on this hit list and I wanted to beat them. Everybody I personally knew was on this hit list in the Northern California area. And I would actually, I had, had a literal list and I would cross people off this list. My best friend, Jesse Burdick, was even on that list. And I remember crossing his name off that list because I just was so obsessed with being stronger than everybody else. And I thought it was this crazy internal drive. And yes, it was inspired by Westside and by Dave Tate uh, and other influences. I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I bench press 854 pounds in the 275 pound weight class. And I finally topple uh, somebody that was on the record board at Westside Barbell, which at the time was Dave Hoff. And so I was super excited and I shot a video and I talked about it. I talked a little bit of trash and I said, you know, Louie, you said I'll never be on that record board. Well, I beat one of your guys. Obviously, I, I couldn't get on the record board because I was no longer in the gym. But here I am thinking that like I went off and did this on my own. It's not true. I didn't go off and do it on my own. It was still inspired by Louis Simmons because if he told me that I would never get on the record board, uh, I would have never been able to uh, beat what Dave Hoff was able to do in the bench press. Anyway, Dave Hoff went on the bench press over a thousand pounds, so I have no hopes of ever, uh, ever beating any of those lifters ever again. But I did for that moment, and it was driven by a madman that they call Louis Simmons. Um, Again, back to the movie. I really loved a lot of the stuff that they had in there. Um, I thought they did a great job explaining a lot of things. One other thing that I want to share with you guys that wasn't, they touched upon it a little bit in the movie, but Louis Simmons is an extreme, extremely loving and giving person. And they do talk about him taking people to breakfast and always paying for it and stuff like that. But when my son Jake was born, Lou, this actually caused a big stir in the gym and everybody hated me for a while in the gym is because Louie actually came to my home and he actually held Jake and he, he and I, I just thought this was a normal occurrence I thought okay this is like family everyone's like family around here well I didn't realize not only is it not like family necessarily a lot of these men and women don't, e don't even know each other's real names they only know each other by their nicknames uh, there's, there was just all these weird nicknames. Like one guy's name was Chester, but his name was John. Uh, another guy's name, everyone called him Gritter, but no one knew his first name. Uh, Size Master. I mean, I'm just thinking some of these names are starting to come back to me now as I'm sitting here thinking of it. But, but no one was that close. All they knew was their gym numbers. All they knew was the guy benches 705, the guy squats 937 or whatever. They just That's all they knew about each other. Um, and I didn't know that Louis Simmons never went anywhere for anybody. Uh, he never, even though I mentioned he's a loving and caring person, he's obsessed with the gym. He's obsessed with the gym culture. And he was always trying to build that. And his private time, he would be with his wife, where he should be, right? I didn't realize, you know, I went in the gym, I was all excited and I told people in the gym, I'm like, yeah, it was crazy. Like, you know, I just had my son and, you know, Luke came over and he wanted to see how everybody's doing. And, and everyone's like, what? They're like what the fuck did you just say? And I'm like, I, I'm like, well, Louis, he came, he came over because you know he, as I just had a son and like he was fired up about it, so he came over and wanted to congratulate us. And they're like, it was like one person after another, like Louis didn't come to my wedding, and Louis didn't come to this, and Louis didn't come to that. And they mentioned in the movie that Louis didn't go to one of the funerals of one of the guys, uh, one of the famous guys, Matt Dimmel, who was in their gym. And, you know, I don't know why Louie ever trusted in me or, or what Louie ever really saw in me to give me a chance, to give me a shot. 
At the time that I trained at Westside Barbell, I was not even a powerlifter. I was just a wannabe professional wrestler. I'm here to talk about something a little bit more important. I'm here to talk about myself. So listen up, all you fat internet nerds and wrestling barneys and California stump jumpers. But for whatever reason, uh, he allowed me to train there. I'm really grateful and thankful uh, that Louis Simmons did that for me. I'm grateful and thankful uh, what Westside Barbell has done for me. And Westside Barbell has taught me to think outside the box and it's what's inspired me to come up with a lot of my own products, to be inventive, to be creative. I'm a US patent holder as well. And as I sit here on this box in a box squat position, uh, I can tell you guys that from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate everything that Louis Simmons and Westside Barbell has done for me. Please go watch the movie. Please go support it. Powerlifting always needs more support. It's a really thankless sport. Uh, not enough men and women are uh, participating in it. And a lot of times we gripe that we don't have this or that. Well, you have a really good, cool movie to go watch. So go check it out. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. I'll catch you guys later. Whoosh.